Uh, I'm going to head over to the Beko Kitchen to find out what Mark has got on the menu today, Mark. What are you doing? Right, we've got a chilli beef today. Excellent. What's in there? Is that well, a we, glass of Guinness? Yes. It actually it's, is. It is. We're yeah, making we a got choke. We've got some dark beer. So we've got the usual suspects in here, the tomatoes, the chilli, uh, the minced beef, but there's a few extra ingredients in here and well spotted. So we've got some beautiful dark beer as well, which will richen up the flavour and a bit of turmeric as well. But a turmeric, mm. it's sort of so it's going to be a little bit different. Very, very now, very 2018 with a turmeric in there. It certainly is. I'm looking forward to seeing how that comes together. Here we are making beef chilli. I have to confess, not something that I grew up with, um, because I was that kid that went not mince again. I don't want mince. Oh, it's great. It's, it's amazing what you can do with mince actually, and the, and this is a prime example. So got some beef. Is that here. prime mince? Per chance, is it that is, a little it is. joke there? A yeah, prime yeah. example. Good. I like what you I did like there. that. Mike wouldn't have picked up on that. <laughs> you can come back. Okay, so the mince. <laughs> right, so we've got the mince first. So it's it's, it's like a chilli, you know, we've got the chilli in there and everything, but it's it's a little bit different from the chilli con carne. We've got no um, kidney beans in there. We're adding beer, so that's, yeah. a, that's a thumbs up. And um, we've got the tomatoes in there, we've got the chilies in there. But then we've got some ginger and um, garlic and um, obviously what we talked about before, the curry powder. Uh, curry powder and turmeric in yeah. there, so we've got different flavours going in and lots of coriander. So there's a lot of that, lot of sort of updated ingredients in here, and what I love too is, you know, a lot of us have eaten all these meals for a hundred years, but I think what we're seeing more now, and maybe you disagree with me, a lot of these kind of staple recipes are being updated to make them maybe just a little bit more appealing, because it doesn't just need to be no. an oxo cube and some brown mints. No, exactly, exactly, and uh, yeah. yeah, it's sort of moving forward and it's adapting and it's yeah, and it's putting different flavours in. And um... as much as I love a good oxo cube, don't get me wrong. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got the capsicums going on there. Can I do anything yet? I'm yes, no, you can. Yourself. I thought you wouldn't ask. You'd never <laughs> ask. Um, right, so we've got a hot pan here. So we're going to brown the mince off first. So right. that's all for you. We've got the Fantastic. oil in there as well. So just be careful with that. Keep it um, moving around. Yeah. Nice, nice fizzle. That's really good. And then. As, as you're moving it around, you're breaking it up. Perfect. You've done that before. I, I, a few times there were some student days where it was mints uh, with a side of mints, <laughs> uh, a little bit extra mint, and we'd have mints on a Friday night just for a change. Well, maybe there's the problem right there. <laughs> so this is a great one to mix it up, as you were saying before. Right. So in here, what we're going to do? So instead of, instead of sending lots of time chopping everything up, which you could do if you wanted, have that nice texture in there. I don't want to. No, brilliant. <laughs> so we're going to appeal to uh, you know people with a little bit less time in the kitchen or students, yeah. <laughs> as you said before. What I think too is th these are great midweek meals, and you know we talk about how you can involve kids and stuff like that. I reckon exactly yeah. any time you get a kid in the kitchen and having that involvement of where does food come from and what's in there. It kind of, uh, in my experience anyway, taking away that kind of fussy thing. I don't like Definitely. that. Definitely. Like no, I was. Exactly. And if they, if they see it or they help, you know, they, they almost have to eat it. Yeah. And, and that's half the battle, you know. If, you know, kids, they look at it, they don't want to eat it, they're like, no, no, they won't even try it. But if you get them to try it, then, yeah. you know, surprise, surprise, they love it and then they eat it. And then, of course, the Holy Grail is where they just completely take over and mum and dad are at the end of the bench with a nice glass of red. And the kids are cooking <laughs> yeah, dinner. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's that takes a few years though. <laughs> right, know. so I've got um, onions in there, garlic, ginger, chilli. We've got the uh, turmeric in there, a little bit of lemon, and yeah. I've got some olive oil in there as well. And then we just blend that to a nice um, paste. Really, really easy. I, I mean, like colour in there. I know, loads of colour, loads of flavour. Mm. And then what I'm going to do now, once you've got it down, blend it into a paste, I'm going to pop coriander in there. Oh, so a nice big handful of coriander. You know, and this is going to give us loads of flavour for our chilli. So just remind me what's in there. So we've got the onions in there. So just yep. peel them, chop them up. Capsicum's in there. Ginger, garlic, olive oil, a little bit of lemon juice. You can put a little bit of salt and pepper in there, or you can just season the mince a little bit. So it's yep. always good to get that sort of a little bit of seasoning through the whole cook. So we didn't have to do any cooking with that, what you've blitzed. No, I'm going to pop that in there now. Because I'm looking at that going, that looks like a really good dip. <laughs> Well, you, can, you can try it if you wanted. Probably quite harsh because you've got that garlic in there and ginger in there. But okay once we put it. it in the mince, you know, it's going to cook down. You're going to get all those flavours releasing from that and it's going to flavour that mince. So Excellent. that goes in now. Oh, hello there. I'll get rid of that. Yum. Oh my goodness, the smell. This is unbelievable. <laughs> wow. It may have turned mince around for it. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. 
And then, so what you want to do is we want to just cook this over a medium, sort of a low to medium heat, let it bubble, but let all those flavours cook and penetrate that mince before we you get onto our next stage. The onion. There's just a few <laughs> onions going on here at the moment. And I guess blitzing it makes it cook faster, does it too? Yeah, exactly. exactly. And you get all those flavours in there in one go. I love it. Oh, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how this all comes together. We're going to get the next steps on Mark's beef chilli. I'm actually crying right after we catch up with Holly. Now I'm going to put Mark on the spot because it is talk like a pirate day. Mark, I'm just going to need you to do your best. <laughs> Yar. Uar. Yeah. Oh, that's our on camera. Well, that's a. Do <laughs> 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 it again. Uar. 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 Like Yorkshire man. Uar. <laughs> I don't think that's a pirate. John and Depp wasn't doing that one, love. It's yar. Yar. Yeah. Okay. Now I've made you feel uncomfortable. Back to the mince. What are we making? Oh, I have no idea. Now you've lost. I've, I've, I've this lost is everything. Chili. Today, no, right. It's chilly. <laughs> right. So you can see. We see. We blitzed up the paste before. We popped it on. And you can see you've been cooking that as well, so it's become dry now. But look at all that um, colour which has gone mm. into the mince and all that flavour as well. So this is a great stage now. A little bit of uh, curry powder. That goes Lovely. in now. Now, when this is all going into my stirring, or you can just get no, it no, no, you, it. no, you can keep stirring it. Okay, great. And then just give that curry powder just a little bit of heat, and that'll just give you this sort of extra little zing to the uh, curry. Stir Bay leaves go in. Zing. Stirring is actually one of my fortes. I was particularly <laughs> fond of it as a child in our family. And now oh, I, I was going to say, you're a very good stirrer. <laughs> right, okay. tomato paste. Lovely. Goes in there. And, right. um, you know, every time you put a tomato paste in, it's always a good, good idea. Just, you know, fry it a little bit, you know. Two or three minutes, if you've got the time, just fry it and it will just release a different flavour. Mm. Oh, right, some vegetables now. Okay. So, so this is a great one for the kids as well. Obviously, you can tone down the chilli yeah. and the spiciness of it, but but then this is a great technique to uh, get vegetables into your kids. I was about you know, to say a bit that because yes, you know you start. Someone should, in fact, they may have already done a book, a thousand and one ways to hide vegetables for children. <laughs> yeah. um, and I'm figuring that with that grating going on there, this will just that carrot will just sit nicely, just yeah, quietly yeah. within that chilli. And it, and it will just it will just blend in, you know. And you know if if they're clever kids and they see it and they're like, what's this? And they pick all the little bits of carrot out. Blend it again. Get the blender back out and just <laughs> blend it into a liquid. A question about bay leaves. What is it that they add? Because I've always gone, nah, bay leaf. They give, um, you know, so it's quite sort of a perfumed flavour. Yeah. You know, and, and you get this fresh flavour. If you leave it, you know, if, if you sort of try it now or, or taste it and you put a bay leaf in towards the end, it's quite perfumed. Yeah. But then if you put it in at the beginning and cook it all the way through, it's it's it sort of loses a bit of that perfume, but it just... It just adds something which you, you don't really notice, but if you don't put it in, you do notice. Not if that really. makes sense. I'll believe you, thousands <laughs> wouldn't. I've got to, the reason I ask is I've got two bay trees growing outside our kitchen window, and I was sort of about cutting them down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Send them to the restaurant. Because <laughs> yeah. I was just like, oh, well, you can it's, dry just, them. it's like putting shrubbery in your food, and then you've got to pick it out. It's like when you find a star anise, you break a filling. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, yeah, so true. what's going on in here? Right, so we've got grated courgettes, grated carrots in there, so they go in, so you can keep stirring it around, keep cooking them, yep. but now we're going to add our liquids. Oh, yes. Right, so I've got, uh, so you can either use a tin of chopped tomatoes yep. or, or some uh, passata sauce. That just Gross. comes in a jar, but basically just sort of um, tomatoes, um, you know, blended up and cooked down. So that goes in there. And then, you know... Could you, you use fresh tomatoes? Uh, you could use some fresh tomatoes as well. You maybe put a splash of uh, water in just to help right. them break down, but then yep. you get all the liquid and cook it off. Oh, uh, right, but time yeah, for a beer. Exactly, right. So what you want is, um, you know, it's measured out. You need a, a bottle of beer, and you only want to put half of it in. Oh. And the well, rest is for the... Yeah, how yeah. unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, well, you've opened it, so you might as well drink it. What so, would you do with the other half? Drink it. <laughs> so... Um, you know, you can you can put beer in there, and it's really good because there's not going to be any alcohol in there. It's just no. going to give you this really awesome, deep, rich flavour. You know, if you didn't want to put beer in there, you know, you could just use some beef stock or chicken stock if you want, or you could use some coffee. If you don't want to put beer in there, you're a philistine. <laughs> yeah, you could drink the beer, and you could put coffee in there, and that'll give you the same sort of deep, rich flavour. So you know, I can smell that beer in there right now. Uh, well, as you say, more in. yeah, best we do that. <laughs> yeah. um, that uh, there's nothing like you know a beer and beef pie and stuff like that, so I assume we're going to get that same sort of yeah, richness you, through Yeah, you're going to get that rich flavour, and you know, don't use a, a lager, you know, use a really sort of dark beer, you know, Guinness is perfect, yep. uh, black beer, or a dark red beer, and, and you just get more 
and more flavour. And what you want to do, bring it up to the boil, turn it down, and then just slowly cook it. And you know, cook it as long as you can. We've got all these big flavours in there, and it's all going to cook down together. It'll be full of flavour. And then we've got some sour cream, and we've got some fresh uh, sliced jalapenos as well to serve it. A bit more coriander, little wedge of lemon, and uh, serve it on some rice. And that is a fantastic midweek. Dinner. Hey, um, now it is over to taste that beef chili, Mark. Oh, look at this. So, a little bit of rice, get that chili on top, and then a little bit of lemon, some sour cream, mm -hmm. and some more chilies. Yes. Speaking the language. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Oh, here you go. Ah. I've taken the bay leaves out for you as well. Thank you. It's just like I bought one. Okay, what's on the menu for tomorrow? Right, tomorrow I've got a classic chicken chow mein.